The sky isn't blue on Mars, but the sunsets are. Why is this the opposite to how it works on Earth? The blue sky on Earth is beautiful, but have you ever wondered what colour the sky would be on other planets of our solar system? I've just said it's not blue on Mars, but is it blue on any of them apart from Earth? Would it be a different colour like red, yellow, purple, green, or even white or black? How do we even define the sky for gas giant planets? What's cool is that the answer isn't always as obvious as you might think. The sky isn't even always the same colour as the planet looks from the outside. Okay, before we get into this, we need to set the rules for what we're talking about here. Of course, just like on Earth, the sky can vary in colour on other planets. From day to day, time to time, or place to place, it might change a little bit. Here, we'll be aiming to find out if you're on the planet on a typical day, during the day, and you look up into the sky, what colour would you see? Some of these planets we've actually visited, so we can look at those images to get the colours. And for the planets we haven't visited, we'll be having our best guess at what we would see based on the physics and chemistry that we know is happening on those planets. All of that said, let's get into this. And yes, I'll even include Pluto too, even though we can all agree it's not a planet, right? Right. Either way, the first stop here is Mercury. This is the first and smallest planet in our solar system, and it's a simple one to start with for our colour question. Due to its very small size, Mercury has very low surface gravity, at only about 38% the strength that gravity is on Earth. That means that if you weighed 100 kilograms on Earth, for example, you'd only weigh 37 or 38 on Mercury. I mean, you'd also probably be dead, because the conditions on Mercury are absolutely atrocious for life. But that's a story for another day. The low gravity makes it hard for Mercury to hold on to any significant atmosphere. Combine that with it being the closest planet to the Sun, so it's always being blasted by high energy radiation that would also strip away an atmosphere into space. And we have the perfect conditions for a planet with a jet black sky. Our atmosphere on Earth is why the sky is blue, and we'll get into that more later, but it's to do with the way it spreads out sunlight. With no atmosphere, this can't happen on Mercury, and we're left with a black sky. We're basically looking straight out into the void of space. This is the same as it is on the Moon. So while we've never sent a probe that landed on Mercury, we can get a sense of what this would be like using photos and footage from the Moon landings. Some probes have flown by and orbited Mercury, including Mariner 10, Messenger, and Bepi Colombo. So we have some great images of the planet, and some new ones coming soon from Bepi, but no image from the surface just yet. Venus is our next planet, and this one is also quite simple because we have landed probes on Venus. In the 70s and early 80s, the Soviet Union landed several missions on Venus. Although each one didn't last long before intense heat and pressure melted and crushed the probes. Some of them did last long enough and were able to send back images to us. These showed us that the sky looks sort of yellowy orange, nothing like our blue skies. This is because, completely opposite to Mercury, Venus has a very, very thick atmosphere and it has a lot of large particles suspended in it. Effectively, thick clouds everywhere, every day. The main factor in the colour of a sky is really the gases that make up its atmosphere, but also the particles that make up clouds contribute too. And here we're dominated by those thick clouds always filling the skies. These dusty clouds interact with longer wavelengths of light and send them towards the ground for our eyes, or in this case cameras, to see. On Venus, this makes the sky tend to look a yellow-orange in the day, and likely sunrises and sunsets would be a deep blood-red colour. Although unfortunately, none of the probes lasted long enough to capture an image of that. Next up, we're back down to Earth. The sky is blue, so let's talk about why that is. The light that leaves the sun is white. It's a combination of all of the colours of the rainbow, plus some other stuff we can't see. And these combine to make white light. It leaves the sun in all directions, and when it reaches the Earth, the light gets scattered by particles in our atmosphere. This means that light bounces off particles in the atmosphere, sending it scattering in all directions. Blue light is pretty much the shortest wavelength light of all of the visible colours, and it gets scattered more by the particular molecules in our atmosphere. This is a process called Rayleigh scattering. It means that while the other colours largely pass through the atmosphere and don't bounce off of anything to get redirected to our eyes, 
Blue light is more likely to hit a molecule and bounce off. By chance, many more of these blue packets reach your eyes than any other color, making the sky look blue to us. What's cool is the exact same process is what makes sunsets and sunrises look red. You might think, why aren't they blue as well? But I'll tell you why. When the sun is low on the horizon, sunlight has to travel through a lot more atmosphere to reach our eyes. This means that the blue light gets scattered even more, many times and in all directions, and most of it ends up traveling away from you. The red light, on the other hand, travels through the atmosphere with much less chance of getting scattered, meaning that when the sun is low on the horizon, most of the red light reaches your eyes, and it makes the sunrise and sunset look red. Speaking of red, the next planet is Mars, often known as the red planet, but this is an interesting one. Like Venus, we again have plenty of pictures that show us exactly what color the sky is. Mars is known as the red planet, but that's talking about the color of the ground that we can see when we look at the planet. Is the sky the same color? Well, sort of, but not really if you ask me. Typically, during the day, the sky on Mars looks somewhere between pinkish red to yellowy brown. Mars has a much thinner atmosphere than we have on Earth, and Rayleigh scattering has a much smaller effect. It's still there, but it doesn't dominate to make the sky blue like on Earth. The color of Mars's sky is more due to scattering of light off of other molecules in the sky, such as dust, of which there is a lot of on Mars. The red surface of the planet is due to oxidized rocks covering the planet, and then frequent dust storms whip up particles of this red rock and spread it throughout the atmosphere. The surface of Mars is basically rusty, and the sky kind of is too. This dust scatters red light better than blue light. It's a similar process to the scattering that causes Earth's sky to be blue, but on Mars it gives us this sort of butterscotchy sky. Similarly, at sunrise and sunset, the red light is scattered away from the ground more often, so we would see a bluey sky at dusk and dawn. The next planets are where it starts to get really tough, but also interesting. It's hard to even define what we mean to be on Jupiter. We call it a gas giant planet, and we don't really know what's beneath the thick, thick atmosphere that we can see the top of from space. We think that at some point there must be something solid there, but humans almost certainly would not be able to survive on it. The pressure would crush you, and the temperature would kill you too. It's just a question of which one happens first. Instead, let's just pick a spot not too deep inside of Jupiter for the moment, and let's think about that. Here, perhaps surprisingly, the sky would probably be blue, thanks to the same Rayleigh scattering that gives Earth the blue hue. But it would be paler on Jupiter, since it's 484 million miles from the Sun, over five times further than the Earth is, so it actually receives a lot less light due to this huge distance. This in turn would probably make the sky a paler blue. If the spot we were standing on was much deeper inside the planet, the sky would get redder and redder, as the scattering stops the blue light making it that deep. And it would also get darker and darker as less light makes it down that far. All of this is probably a bit academic anyway, as the clouds would probably be so thick that that's all you could see anyway. And these clouds would indeed be red, blue, or white. For Jupiter, and actually all the planets after this, we have no photos from inside the planet, as the only probes that have entered the gas giants did so to end their missions, and they weren't able to send any images back to us. So for this, all we have are artists' impressions for visuals. Just note that when you're looking at these pictures I'm showing you now. The story of Saturn will be similar. There isn't a known surface for us to imagine ourselves stood on, and there is some disagreement about the colour the sky would look if you were below the Saturnian clouds. One option is that it would indeed look blue again, thanks to the Rayleigh scattering we've already discussed. The other possibility is that the sky could indeed look yellow, just as the planet does from the outside. This would be caused by the high abundance of ammonia crystals in the upper atmosphere of Saturn. They scatter yellow light very well, so as well as sending that light back to Earth to cause the planet to look yellow from here, they could also scatter yellow light across the sky to give it a yellow appearance if you were on or in Saturn. I think the most likely scenario here is that the sky in the upper atmosphere looks a bit blue, and the further down you go, it turns a yellowish colour. Uranus and Neptune, the ice giants of our solar system, are both fairly similar. Both have a blue sky, but the shades of blue will be slightly different. Both of these planets have atmosphere which are composed primarily of hydrogen. This will scatter blue light more than red light, giving us a blue sky. 
However, Uranus also has a good amount of methane in its upper atmosphere, which scatters both blue light and green light quite often, leading to a more cyan colour of the sky, and making it a little greener than the Neptunian sky would be. And yes, for those following along at home, methane is the gas that makes up farts. So yes, Uranus is full of fart gas. Feel free to laugh at that fact if you'd like to. Neptune is famous for having the fastest winds in the solar system, and on Neptune the winds sometimes clock in at faster than the speed of sound. However, the sky on Neptune is remarkably similar in colour to the Earth's own blue tones. Interestingly, Neptune does also have some methane in its atmosphere, but it seems that Uranus's higher density in the upper atmosphere and the ferocious storms on Neptune still lead to different colours. The exact cause of the difference is still unknown, to be honest, and it is something that scientists are still working to understand better. For all you Pluto heads out there, I did say we'd cover Pluto too. So let's look at everybody's favourite not a planet. If you have a guess for the colour of the Plutonian sky, let me know in the comments down below. Did you guess blue? The most popular sky colour it seems? If so, you'd be right. While the planet has a reddish surface, the atmosphere has a blue haze. We can actually see this from this image from the New Horizons probe that flew past Pluto. It didn't land on the asteroid, but it took a photo through the atmosphere, showing the blue glow. There are also countless other objects in the solar system, from moons to dwarf planets, asteroids and comets. Too many to go through. Most of them have no atmosphere at all, so they would be exposed to space and have black skies like Mercury and the Moon. One honorary mention though is Saturn's moon Titan. It's the second largest moon in the solar system after Jupiter's Ganymede, and it's actually larger than Mercury. But it's also the only moon with a significant atmosphere. What's cool is we've also landed a probe on it and have seen pictures from the surface. The Huygens probe landed on Titan in 2005 and literally showed us that the sky is orange. Due to the distance from the sun, there will be relatively little light on Titan even during the day. It would be about as bright as twilight is on Earth. The air will be hazy and fairly opaque to human eyes, as we can see here. But it's likely that Saturn is permanently visible in the sky too, so that's pretty cool. Beyond our solar system, there are thousands of other known planets, and billions yet to be discovered by humans. They could host a huge range of sky colours. For now, we can't confidently confirm any of them, but I bet there are some amazing ones out there to be seen. Thank you for watching this far into the video, I hope you enjoyed it, and feel free to leave any questions or comments down below, including which colour you most hope fills the sky on an exoplanet out there somewhere. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!